Hey again, guys. Hey, you know, before we can really move forward again, as you can see, we haven't really done anything except mutually terminated contracts. I haven't even accepted the Club Vision, actually. Let's go ahead and do that, accept Club Vision. How about that? Before we really can move forward, though, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we've got some stuff set up for us so that we'll be successful. The important thing, I would say, is to make sure that we have friendly set up because um, a team like this, we're going to need to... Um, get some money now we don't want to do a whole bunch of friendlies on the road so we're going to cancel those we don't want to have that happen we're going to instead have a bunch of friendlies at home which will hopefully maximize our potential profit right so we can make a whole bunch of money so um we are in the a league of course temporarily we have matches for the most part on wednesday and uh, saturday and um the uh, uh training schedule which i always use the uh, evidence-based football manager training schedule is designed so that you have matches wednesday and saturday it fits in perfectly so what we're going to do is we're going to look here and try to see which teams we can play against for the most part, we, we're going to avoid um, too many of these uh, matches against foreign teams. We want to sort of maximize the amount of money that we can get in income uh, versus the fee. So we'll look, I think, first for other um, teams in South Korea and teams that sort of come up here right away. And uh, we're just going to look and we're going to make sure every single time that um, when we schedule these matches that we're making money in the long run. That is the purpose of this. It's not, it's in part to, I mean, we want to play matches so that the players know the tactic, they get used to that, they have some cohesion, they can play against each other and so on, but, or play together with each other, I mean. But the most important thing for us is that little bit of income we're getting. We're getting 20,000 euro for every one of these matches, and we schedule, let's say, like five of them, that's going to be 100,000 euro for the uh, pocketbook of the club. It's going to be 100,000 euro that goes straight into the budget and that makes it a lot easier for us um, if there are problems or challenges or whatever that come along financially. We want to make sure that we always do this and we want to make sure that the majority of the matches that we schedule um, as uh, friendlies are going to be at home. Now we've already come across, uh, not quite yet, almost come across a problem which is that when you do it this way you have to make sure that you don't invite the same team to come uh, play in your home stadium twice. Because if you do that, you're going to run into an issue. Um, they're going to say no to the second one. Um, and then you're going to have to go back here and you're going to have to get it uh, figured out again. If that's the case, then usually I'll go over here to like a smaller reputation team where you can go over to a similar reputation for a uh, foreign team and see what happens. With this, when you're playing against a foreign team, you have to be careful. So see, we can have Minnesota United come, but the uh, fee is higher than the, uh, the income that we get from that. We don't want to do that. That would be a bad idea because the purpose of this is not to play against some like crazy foreign team. Rather, the purpose of doing this is to try to get our team um, uh, used to playing together and to play against opposition that will ha have help us earn money in the long run. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll schedule one Chinese team and we'll sort of see what happens from there. Now we can do the same thing here with the B team, right? So again, the B team, I mean, their matches are all on Monday, whatever. I don't care. They're going to have Wednesday and uh, Saturday um, uh, friendlies if they can. And again, we want to be careful with this because you see we can get some teams to come over that would um, cost money, but uh, we don't get any money out of it. So uh, we'll have February 8th come over. It's a North Korean team. I know it's weird. Welcome to Football Manager Logic. Um, I think this is another North Korean team, so we will have them come as well. And uh, we just go through here and we will schedule that. It doesn't recognize that these teams are from the other Korea. Um, and it's fine, we can have Best Korea come here and visit us in, uh, in South Korea and um, see what happens. Yeah, Pyongyang City, I can give you one guess as to what country that's in. Now, when it comes to the B team, you're not going to make a whole lot of money. Same thing's true with the under-19s and uh, stuff like that. You're not going to make a whole ton of money off of these teams that are um, uh, sort of like further down in your setup, but you still want to do this. Um, you want to make sure that you have as many friendlies as you can and just make sure you're not losing money in the proposition. Um, even if you're not making a whole bunch, even if nobody shows up, it's important for you to do this because you want to make sure that um, the uh, players who are on these teams at some point in time le learn your tactic. Now, I know that for my B team, most of the uh, players are out for loan, and most of these guys are probably never going to play for the first team, like, no matter what. But um, it doesn't really matter, right? We want to make sure that these guys learn the tactic anyway and um, do the best that they can. You can make money, at least in this setup, by having a, a really good... Um, uh, B team um, if they perform well in their league. Uh, 
um, there is a way to make money that way. And so, you know, don't feel upset if you have some players that you really wanted to kind of get rid of that are still on your team, um, because uh, if they play well for you, you can make money off of them. If they don't play well for you, well, who cares? You know, you don't even have to look at them because they're not on your first team. Same thing here goes for your under 19s. Again, be careful if uh, your scheduling friendlies are going to cost you money. Usually stuff that's like lower amounts of money will end up making you a very small uh, profit. You know, so who cares? Um, but anything that's like a higher amount of money, um, you have to be very, very careful with. So we'll take a look, see if one of these other ones uh, comes up here. Yeah, so for like the Inchon B, oh, look, we could make some money off of that. So maybe that's a good idea. In general, your youth team, if they play against a B team, um, is going to be able to make money. But if we have them play against Doro, Gang, whatever that's from, they're not going to make anything. So uh, look for the B teams. That might make you some money because you're playing against a team that's like totally above your ability. Um, uh, same thing with any sort of reserve team. You always want to look out for that. Is that realistic? Is it not realistic? I actually have no idea. This is just the way that it is. So don't ask too many questions. Just go along with it. Um, and you will be just fine um, if you ask a lot of questions about this and uh, think about it too much You'll get a little bit confused and you'll be like oh wait This doesn't make sense up oh, and see we have one that is a duplicate So what we will do is we will uh, remove this one um, uh, cancel that friendly uh, Appointment uh, yep, we cancel that one and we'll arrange a different friendly in its place um, And see we can't do it quite yet because we've already got that spot um, Set up so uh, so much for that We'll go and do, I don't know, some other team. And just go through here and figure it out. Now, it, when you get to the point, when we get to the point here eventually, um, probably after a couple seasons, where we're having like players on the B team or on the youth team that we're actually serious about, that we really want to you know, develop well and we want them to be good and all this stuff, when we get to that point, we're going to want to um, make sure that uh, the B team and the under-19 teams are as much as possible playing against teams that have better reputations and that are actually going to give them a challenge. Right? You don't want them to go play against the dregs all the time because it's not much of a challenge and your players are not really going to make any sort of uh, progress. Now, you can't guarantee that every single match is going to be against a team that is um, above your level, but um, uh, you can make it so that um, you know, you're going to play at least some matches against teams that are at least somewhat above your level um, so that uh, you, know, you have a challenge. The last thing in the world you want to do is just have a whole bunch of throwaway friendlies. Now, I know that people will tell you, especially on YouTube, in your first team, that you can schedule throwaway friendlies, especially um, if you're having a really, really rough time of it. Um, and you have like an off day or an off week or something like that to get your morale turned around, that is fine. You can do that, right? But for the most part, what you want to do for um, the development of your players and uh, for the, um, you know, sort of like the long-term health of your team is you want to play against teams that are at a level higher than yours and uh, that actually offer a challenge for you. So that's the theory behind this. That's the way that you set up a good, um, friendly schedule. I mean, you know, you can see we've uh, got quite a few things set up here so far. And, um, I mean, I think uh, personally that this is uh, not such a bad schedule at all for the beginning of the season. This happens again every single time I play a save. I do the exact same thing because that's just the way you do it. You set it up, you go in, you set up your friendlies. Again, you know, you want them all to be home because there's no reason to have them on the road, right? You can make some money. You'll make more money, though, by doing it at home. So because you make more money that way, go make more money. That's part of the idea. You're doing this to make money. This isn't a charity. So there you go. And I'll have a little bit more for you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.